Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we were called to a local residence on August 22, 2024, because they had reported a ground nest of bees in their backyard. They had marked the nest site with a bucket, and when we arrived, we found a very large active nest filled with bumblebees, one of our most important beneficial native pollinators here in Northeast Indiana, USA. So this was a very special relocation project that had to be done with care. As we began the dig for this nest, we used our vacuum extraction gear to collect hundreds of worker bees that filled two collection bottles, and the nest tunnel opening turned out to be several feet from the actual nest cavity underground. So we had to dig and dig a long trench to follow the tunnel all the way to the nest. Finally, we exposed the nest cavity, which was a foot and a half underground and much larger than a basketball. So these bees had done some major excavating of a long tunnel and an expansive underground cavity space. We could only reach some of the larval cells, these wax round balls that they raise their larva in. So it was difficult to get access to the nest, though we had located it. We then had to dig out by hand, very carefully, all of this material and put it into a plastic bin. And we just started getting handful after handful of this nest pulled out of that cavity. But there was only so much of it we could reach from the opening of the nest cavity. We were going to have to dig more. Bumblebee nests are a combination of nesting material similar to what rodents use, like soft grass and plant material, along with all the wax material that they store their larvae and their food in. So all this material was mixed up in that hole, and we could not get access to most of it, so we had to dig quite extensively around the top of the nest to remove a lot of earth. Once the whole nest was exposed, we could get access to the entire nest and start lifting out the material, and there was a lot. And this was a huge nest. It, there was a tremendous number of wax cells in there. We just started filling up this plastic bin with this nest, and then we identified the queen. There she was, right in the bin. It was perfect, and we could contain her with all her workers. And at that point, we were set to relocate the nest to a native prairie owned by a local church. They had given us permission to put these beneficial native pollinators right on their land. So we were able to dig a hole in the native prairie that they had, and set up a box that we could put the nest into underground. And in this box, we also added a cardboard tube to simulate their tunnel. And we buried everything underground just as the nest had been found, except for the tube which led up to the surface. For the most part, bumblebees are pretty docile, and they're a mellow insect, and they'll never bother you. But as you see here, they were attacking in force when we messed with their nest a little too much for their liking. But ultimately, we got them reburied in the ground, along with their queen, a lot of their workers, and their nest cells. So we believe this will be a pretty successful relocation. It was a beautiful landscape, and it's a native prairie. This is exactly where bees and wasps belong. Lots of wildflowers, lots of things to pollinate, lots of nectar to gather. So we hope they're going to do okay here. So let's take you back to August 22nd. We're going to show you the entire process. From the collection of the bees, to digging out the nest, to getting them relocated on this native prairie landscape. If you enjoy the show, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment. August 22nd, 2024. We're in Silver Lake today at a private residence. In the backyard, they have a bumblebee nest. They marked it with this bucket. You can see them coming up and down from this hole in the ground. One here, where you see that one just landed. Beginning the collection, starting to get them contained. It's 
So we found the main hole. Fairly sizable hole, at least the size of a silver dollar. Now we have more coming out. Bumblebees are a very beneficial eusocial species. So they're out pollinating. So when they come back, you can tell they've been out doing their job pollinating. As this bee comes in for a landing, take a look at the bright yellow pollen on its leg sacs. That's where they store the pollen they collect. You can see it on some of these bees that are contained already. Very bright. Bumblebees in general are so docile when they're out foraging, they're very, very mellow. It's, it's extremely unlikely you're going to get stung by a bumblebee. But if you stumble across a nest and startle them, they can come out in force and attack. So it is always recommended that you remove a nest if you find it in a dangerous place. So we're getting a good collection here. They're so mellow, they just sort of wander out. And as soon as they try to take flight, we suck them up. So the initial collection point was this half dollar size hole that we started to excavate. We assumed maybe the nest would be within a few inches of this point. So the dig began and it just kept going and going and going. And we realized they are nowhere near where this tunnel entrance was. It's going to be a longer dig than planned. And that's often the case with wasps, but we didn't know what to expect with these bumblebees. Initially, as you see here, the tunnel was about a foot, foot and a half long, and it just kept going. And as we kept digging this trench out following the hole, the tunnel, it just kept extending until it was several feet long. We started running into objects under the ground and caverns and holes under the ground. It turns out there was a building structure that had been demolished and put under this ground. So there was a lot of cavities from all of that debris. Man, this tunnel is crazy. It started here, it's gone all the way around, and now we're all the way over to here. It's this big, it's a big tunnel, and it just keeps going. They were walking for several feet to get to this nest, and we're still digging. We've got bees coming out of the right side tunnel down here. So there's branches on this main tunnel. Comes all the way down, goes off a branch of there, and we've got bees coming out of here. Let's dig this one out first on the right, see what happens there. 
two branches at the end of this turn. One went left, one went right. Most of the bees were on the right, so we started excavating there, hoping that that would be the jackpot and we'd find the main nest. And sure enough, the more we dug there, the more cavern we found. It started just expansively opening up. And there were just more and more bees being collected in the collection device, so it became clear this was not going to be a small nest. So, we're starting to get a blockage. We have so many bees. We're having a blockage in the suction, so we're going to change out the container. Listen to these guys, they're so loud. So the more we dug, the more bees we found, and the more we collected in the collection devices, we ended up with two full bottles of bees. That's a lot of bees, hundreds of them. So there were bees in every part of this tunnel. As we dug and dug and dug and went foot by foot on this tunnel, we just kept collecting more and more coming out of the tunnel. And eventually we started seeing a fairly large cluster of them uh, toward the end of this tunnel, and we knew we were getting close to the nest. And you have to be careful with bumblebees as far as sting risk is concerned. They have a non-barbed stinger. That means their stinger is smooth, and like wasps, they can sting you multiple times without losing their stinger. Unlike honeybees that have a barbed stinger and they die after they sting you once, bumblebees can get you multiple times, so you have to be really careful. This is why we're wearing an extra pair of work gloves over the bee gloves. So way down in here, we finally found the nest. There's some wax, ball-shaped cups right in here. You see the lighter, the lighter color here right in the center of the frame. That's the beginning of the nest, where they make little wax cups for the larva. So we're gonna have to excavate that carefully. what it looks like. These are the wax cups that they make for the larva. There's more of it here. You can see larva. I hate to disturb it all, but the only way to dig it out. Massive nest. Just handfuls and handfuls of this coming out of this hole. Tons of wax, larva, casings, and larva, and you name it. It just goes on and on underground, and the hole is getting huge. So I'm going to have to go and get some uh, larger shovels. The trowels are not going to cut it. This thing's a good foot and a half underground in a large cavern, maybe two, two feet by one foot at least. So we're gonna have to do some major excavation. Mm -hmm. 
So we've got a very deep tunnel down here. Extremely deep. I can fit my whole half an arm under here. So we're going to have to dig out that whole area. Because I just can't get to the whole nest. And it's a good foot and a half underground. So I'm going to have to dig this whole area with the shovel in order to get to that space. And there's so many bumblebees. So as we dug and dug to get the rest of this nest exposed, we just started refilling the trench as we went along. So once the nest was exposed partially, it was just a matter of digging further and further until we could get to the entire cavern that they were living in. It was a very large cavity space that they had found and dug out. And inside that cavity space were hundreds of bees and a lot of soft plant material that they had dragged underground. They set their nest up almost like a mouse nest. It's got a lot of soft grass and plant material. And then within that is a whole bunch of these small wax balls or cups. And inside each one of those is a larva. Once we dug out all of the earth above the nest cavity, we could start to see the nest being exposed. And this cavity was just massive. It was easily larger than a basketball under there. This is what we're looking for. And there's a lot of it down there still. So then it was just a matter of digging out handful after handful of these wax balls and all of the nest material around it. See that? That's a bumblebee nest. And we'd already put a substantial amount of it into the bin that we brought just to contain the nest. Whatever we could reach from the tunnel that we had opened up, we had already put in the bin. And then once we opened up the earth above the rest of the cavity, we just started filling it up with more. Then it was time to try to track down the queen. You're always hoping to find the queen with any type of underground nest. Otherwise, they can just rebuild as soon as you leave. This could be our queen right here. Here's the queen. This is the queen. I'm going to leave her in there. Because as long as she's in there, the nest can survive elsewhere. When we relocate it. So unfortunately, right at this moment, we lost power on the camera. It overheated in the sun. Nothing we can do about that. We just have to let it cool down. So we just took handfuls and handfuls and handfuls of this nest out of this giant cavern underground. It was hard to believe how much was in there and how deep in they had been entrenched. And they had several feet of tunnel from the point where they were coming out of the ground all the way over to the point deep underground that they had excavated out and put in a bunch of soft grass and things and then put in tons of these wax little ball cups in which they raise their larva. So we were able to collect hundreds of bumblebees. We were able to capture the queen and we got a bin full of nest to relocate. It's important to always try to relocate bumblebees because they are our best native pollinators. They estimate on many crops bumblebees are two to four times more effective pollinators per bee than honeybees. Bumblebees work flowers when they're pollinating and nectaring 50 to 200 percent faster than honeybees and they work 50 or more percent longer hours every day compared to a honeybee 
And honeybees are invasive. They don't belong on this continent. They come from Eurasia. So we've got a zillion bumblebees in here. Can't see them very well because they're buried in the dirt we collected with it. Because we're just going to rebury them with their nest um, off site in a native prairie nearby. Lot of bumblebees. Now it's time to relocate them all. And their nest and their queen is here. It's a massive nest. Lots and lots of cells. A lot of dirt and material had been carefully packed down underground by all these bees. So we'll put all this back underground and we'll make a tunnel out of a cardboard tube. So we're about to take this nest over and relocate it. There's the queen and some of the workers. Up here we have all of our captured workers and they are more than ready to go. They're probably getting overheated in there. So we're going to take the nest material, along with the queen, some of the workers, all of the wax cells, and we're going to dump it all into a box. And we're going to bury that box underground like we found it. And we're going to put a tube up to the surface and bury the rest of the box. And that will be about the best we can do. And then we're going to dump all these guys right in. And hopefully they can survive. So we're at a native prairie section of land and this is where we're going to put our nest is in the prairie area and it's owned by a local church and they gave us permission to come out here and bury the nest and add it to their local flora and fauna. You get a lot of bees and wasps out here and all these beautiful wildflowers so it should be a great place for them to live. We're gonna bury the nest right in there where you see the hole dug. So the first thing we're gonna do is take this nest out of the bin and put it right in the box, which has been pre-positioned in the hole. And then we're gonna close it up and we're gonna add a tube to the surface. And we'll pack dirt and grass around it. Here's our nest. This is the queen right on top, taking care of business. And we're just gonna start scooping it out. That's just about a perfect fit. some of these guys down into the nest box. get it. Now I'm going to close it up.
your buddy out of there. Pretty much. Anybody left in here? All right, guys. Out you go. back over it. Get everything back somewhat like it is. Alright, so our nest has now been reburied out here in the native prairie. Look in there, maybe you can just see the tube. The rest of it's underground. Looks like a pretty great place to be a bumblebee. So good luck bees. <laughs>